Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, in the last lecture we discussed anharmonicity and how does anharmonicity affect vibrational energy levels. The energy of an anharmonic vibrator associated to the vibrational quantum number V is given by nu bar V equals V plus half nu bar E minus V plus half whole squared nu bar E chi E. Here this chi E is the anharmonicity constant. As anharmonicity is a perturbation to the harmonic system, let us revisit the Taylor series expansion of the potential V of R. So, we will revisit the Taylor series of V of R. So, we can write the Taylor series expansion as V of R equals V at the equilibrium bond length plus d V d r at r equilibrium r minus r equilibrium plus 1 by 2 d 2 V d r 2 at r equilibrium r minus r equilibrium squared plus 1 by 6 d 3 V d r 3 at r equilibrium r minus r equilibrium cubed and the other higher terms. So, for the harmonic oscillator solution we considered up to the second order term that means we have only considered up to this much. However, we know that an harmonicity affects the shape of the potential at distances away from the equilibrium bond length. Now, let us look into the differences in the shapes in the anharmonic and the harmonic potential again. So, let us say this is our harmonic potential and here is our anharmonic potential. So, the anharmonic potential is steeper at r less than r equilibrium and shallower at r greater than r equilibrium. So, although the Morse oscillator is quite useful in practice a more general expression is nu bar v equals v plus half nu bar e minus v plus half nu bar e chi e this is square term plus v plus half cubed nu bar e y e plus dot dot dot. So, here this y e like the chi e is also an empirical dimensionless constant characteristic of the molecule. These constants are used to fit the experimental data and to find the dissociation energy of the molecules. So, we can think of the perturbation to the harmonic potential as considering one more higher order term. 
that is this third order term in the Taylor series expansion. So, if we look into this third order term that is 1 by 6 d 3 v d r 3 at r equilibrium r minus r equilibrium cubed, we can see that if this third derivative is negative, then v of r will be steeper for r less than r equilibrium. This is because if this third derivative is negative and we have r less than less than r equilibrium, then this cube term is also negative. So, that means, if you take this product, this product becomes positive. What does this mean? That for some value of r, we are plotting that v of r in the y axis. That means, for the same value of r, the v of r will have a larger value. This means that at r less than r equilibrium, the potential will be steeper. On the other hand, for r greater than greater than r equilibrium, then this r minus r equilibrium term will be positive. So, the product will now be negative because we have a negative term that is the third derivative and we are multiplying with with the positive term. So, the product is negative. So, this means for the same value of r now this v of r will have a smaller value that means this potential will be shallower at r greater than r equilibrium. So, let us now look into the effects of anharmonicity on the selection rule. So, because the energy levels are getting closer and closer together, the specific selection rule which is given by delta v equals plus minus 1 breaks down. This means we can have transitions from v equals 0 to v equals 2 or we can have transitions from v equals 0 to v equals 3. In other words, these transitions become allowed. However, the transitions where delta v is greater than plus minus 1 are very much weaker than the fundamental transition. The bands in the IR spectrum arising from delta v that is greater than plus minus 1 are known as overtones. So, all these bands are known as overtones. The way to think about is that anharmonicity is a small perturbation to the harmonic problem. The harmonic problem has a selection rule that delta v equals plus minus 1. The selection rule gets broken down because of the small perturbation, but because this is a small perturbation, this means that the intensities of anything that breaks the harmonic rule are much weaker. We refer to transitions that break the selection rules as normally as forbidden transitions. So, you can ask if they are forbidden, why do they occur? This is because that the assumptions about these transitions do not really hold in the real world. The harmonic oscillator approximation does not really hold in the real world because the molecules are anharmonic. We call them forbidden because they break the ideal model. But whenever there is a forbidden transition, the intensities associated with the forbidden transitions are very much weak. The anharmonicity as discussed in the last lecture 
also shifts the energy levels. The energy levels get closer and closer as the dissociative limit is approached. For an anharmonic oscillator, this delta V modulus is greater than 1, but the intensities of these transitions where delta V is greater than 1 is very much smaller as we have just mentioned and can be obtained by solving the transition moment integral. In other words, we will get transitions, we will get more transitions than a single peak. For example, from v equals 0 to v equals 2, from v equals 0 to v equals 3, other than from v equals 0 to v equals 1. The frequency of the first overtone, that is v equals 0 to v equals 2, so this is the first overtone. So, this frequency will be approximately twice the fundamental frequency that is the energy gap between v equals 0 to v equals 1. However, it is not exactly twice the frequency. As the energy levels come closer with increase in the value of v in an anharmonic oscillator, the overtone frequency will be slightly smaller than the double of the fundamental frequency. So, now let us try to visualize these transitions. So, as you can see, we have this v equals 0, v equals 1, v equals 2, v equals 3. So, we are plotting v of r here and we see the transition from v equals 0 to v equals 1 is the fundamental band from v equals 0 to v equals 2 is the first overtone and from v equals 0 to v equals 3 is the second overtone. So, if we now use the anharmonic energy expression that is nu bar E equals v plus half nu bar. So, this is nu bar v. So, nu bar e here minus v plus half squared nu bar e chi e. The energy difference corresponding to the first overtone we can find out. So, because the first overtone is from v equals 0 to v equals 2. So, the energy difference that is the delta nu bar for the first overtone will be the nu bar for v plus 2 and we have to subtract nu bar of v from nu bar of v plus 2. So, now let us write, so nu bar of v plus 2 we can write as v plus 2 plus half nu bar e minus v plus 2 plus half squared nu bar e chi e. So, this is one term, this is nu bar v plus 2 and now we have to subtract of nu bar v. So, that is v plus half nu bar e minus v plus half squared nu bar e chi e. So, we can simplify this, we can put the similar terms together. So, we have v plus half plus 2 minus v minus half nu bar e and then if we take minus nu bar e chi e common, what we have is v plus 2 plus half squared minus v plus half squared. So, as we can see the first term gives us 2 nu bar e and for the second term 
we know that a square minus b square equals a plus b times a minus b. So, for this term we can write minus nu bar e chi e, then I have v plus 2 plus half plus v plus half, this is one term. The other term is v plus 2 plus half minus v minus half. So, these cancel out. So, what we have is 2 nu bar e minus 2 times 2 v plus 3 nu bar e chi e. So, this is the energy difference for the first overtone. Thus, we can see that the first overtone will appear at a frequency slightly less than twice of the fundamental. So, now let us see the experimental frequencies of HCl. So, we have already seen this in the last lecture, but let us focus on the transition frequencies of the fundamentals and the overtones now. So, we have the fundamental band here and the frequency nu bar is increasing to the left hand side. So, we can see the first overtone is at 5, 6, 8, 2 wave numbers, but the fundamental was at 2, 8, 9, 0 wave numbers. So, there is a difference of 98 wave numbers. So, it is not twice of 2, 8, 9, 0, but it is twice of 2, 8, 9, 0 minus 98 wave numbers. Similarly, the second overtone is at 8333 wave numbers and this is also off by 337 wave numbers. You can imagine because we know the energies of the Morse potential from the Schrodinger solution, we can use this information about the frequencies of the fundamental and the first overtone to determine what the anharmonicity constant is for the molecule. There is another kind of transition known as the hot bands. So, we have the hot bands and these hot bands also have smaller intensity than the fundamental like we saw in the case of overtones, but this smaller intensity is for an entirely different reason. So, we can have a transition from v equals 1 to v equals 2, this is the first hot band. So, the transition from v equals 1 to v equals 2 is the first hot band. We can also have transition from v equals 2 to v equals 3, which we call as the second hot band. The intensities of these hot bands are very much smaller than the fundamental band. The reason for this is that the population of v equals 1 and v equals 2, which are the initial states of the first and second hot bands respectively are very much smaller than the population of v equals 0 state, which is the initial state of the fundamental band. So, we can see hot bands at much higher temperature, where the population of the v equals 1 level increases as calculated from the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. So, hot bands can also be seen for a much heavier molecule, where the frequency is much small like a heavier diatomic molecule. So, this is because when we talk about the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, let us say we have n 1 by n 0, we can write this as a exponential or e to the power minus h c nu bar by k t. So, we can increase the population in the v equals 1 state or we can increase the n 1 either by increasing the temperature or by decreasing the nu bar. 
So, now if we have a heavier diatomic molecule, then we know that nu bar is given by 1 by 2 pi c root over k by mu. So, the mu increases for the heavier diatomic molecule and because the mu increases, the nu bar decreases and as I already mentioned, the decrease of nu bar has a similar effect as the increase of temperature. But we should always remember that we only see these hot bands in the IR spectrum because of anharmonicity. If everything was harmonic, then all the energy levels will be spaced out by the same frequency or the energy difference that is nu bar. However, because we have anharmonicity, the energy levels come closer and closer. That is why if let us say the wave number is increasing to the right and this is my fundamental band and this is my first overtone and this is my second overtone, then I will see a hot band which is smaller in intensity and also at a smaller frequency compared to the fundamental. So, this will be let us say the first hot band. So, however, there will be a change in the response of the hot bands as compared to the overtone as there is a change in temperature. With increase in temperature, the population of the excited vibrational state will increase at the detriment of the V equals 0 state. This means that the intensity of the hot bands will also increase and the intensity of the fundamental band will decrease as we increase the temperature. This behavior is not the same as the overtones. With overtones, the initial state is always V equals 0. So, the intensities of the overtones will also decrease with increase in temperature in the same way that the intensity of the fundamental band decreases with increase in temperature. So, let us see what will all these transitions look like for a diatomic molecule fairly large spectral region. So, as I have already drawn it here, we are talking about a fairly large spectral region because we have the fundamental band here, the first overtone here, the second overtone here and the hot band which appears at a smaller wave number as compared to the fundamental transition. So, the V equals 1 to V equals 2 is at a frequency smaller than the fundamental. This is because the gap between the V equals 2 and V equals 1 level is smaller than the gap between V equals 1 and V equals 0 levels. So, now we will solve one problem before we end this lecture. So, the problem is given the dissociation energy that is d e is 7.33 times 10 to the power minus 19 joule per molecule and the nu bar e that is the fundamental frequency is 1580 wave numbers and the bond length that is R equilibrium is 121 picometer for oxygen that is 16 oxygen. Find the constant parameter A of the Morse potential. So, we know the Morse potential the is given by V of R equals d e 1 minus e to the power minus A r minus r equilibrium and the whole squared. So, we have to find the value of this a. So, 
we know nu bar e is given by 1 by 2 pi c root over k by mu. So, we can write k equals 2 pi c nu bar squared times mu. So, this is 2 times 3.14 times 3 times 10 to the power 10 centimeter per second and times nu bar that is nu bar e which is given as 1580 centimeter inverse the squared and then we have mu and mu because oxygen is a homonuclear dynamic molecule we can approximate this as 8 and if you convert it into kgs it will be 1.661 times 10 to the power minus 27 kg. So, if you do this calculation you will find the answer to be 1176.3 Newton meter inverse and we have discussed in the previous lecture that k is given by 2 d e times a squared. So, if we want to find e or if we want to find a then a equals root over k by 2 d e. So, we can write this as k is 1176 Newton meter inverse divided by 2 times d e which is given here. So, 2 times 7.33 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules per molecule. So, this will be 2.83 times 10 to the power 10 meter inverse.